Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Come in. Come in. Welcome. 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 Welcome to our transformation mornings with Josie. Uh, it's such a blessing to be here this morning with you. I pray that you guys slept well. Um, I pray that y'all have been enjoying these mornings with me as we transform together. I know that um, you might be um, on your way to work. Maybe you're on your way to drop your children, prepare to get your children up for school um, or on the way, you know, with everyone uh, maybe working on your stuff, working on your business, working on your ministry, working on uh, your assignment for today, whatever it is in the house, tidying up the house, whatever it is. And you decided to plug me in to listen this morning. And for whatever reasons that you decided to join, I want to tell you, I'm so grateful to have you on each and every morning with me. And I pray that these messages have really been making a difference. Um, I know it's just been a few days, um, but I believe that uh, transformation you know, once you get it into your gates, that it begins to take root, seeds begin to go down, you know, and then it begins to sprout up. You know, it don't stay, seeds don't just stay in the ground, you know, they 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 grow roots and they begin to sprout up eventually. So anyway, good morning, good morning. <laughs> I'm already on the road. I'm already <laughs> I'm already on the road this morning. I'm already on the road, but listen. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I kind of feel like this week has passed by so, so fast. I feel like it still should be Monday, but for whatever reason, it's not. <laughs> and uh, But anyhow, we're going to move on. It just don't feel like Friday. But um, anyway, y'all, tell me where you tuning in from this morning. Let me know in the comment section, where are you tuning in from? Don't let me be by myself on this live. Don't just let me just show up and you guys not say anything at all, okay? Just comment. Let me know. Talk back to me. If you're watching this and you still went past the three-minute mark, you went past the two-minute mark, you went past the minute mark, come on. Go ahead and let me know where are you tuning in from what brings you here? How did you uh, discover this page? And if you know me personally, then still tell me uh, because I know you personally, okay? But whatever it is, okay, I just want to welcome each and every one of y'all. I pray that this will help you to have um, even a more uh, faith and a boost in your day. And um, again, this is for world changers. These, these transformation mornings are going to be for those of you who know that God has called you to greater and you are ready to do the work to see that greater come about, right? You're ready to put in the work to see a change. And so again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome all world changers. Good morning, good morning to every chosen one. To everybody that know that you were chosen, you've been born with a price. God hand selected you. He picked you for such a time as this in the earth for you to be able to make a difference. Come on, your gifts and the callings that God has placed over your life. Come on, those things that you need God to um, break off of you. Come on, you're believing in God for something so that you can step into your next. Come on, sometimes we, we are in the in-between phase and we don't know what to do in the in-between. But we're praying and asking God to just give us peace while we're in the middle of the valley. Come on, give us peace, Lord, while we're in the middle, while we're in between so that we can step into that place that you have ordained for us to uh, walk in and have. So just wanted to take the time to go ahead and welcome God into our virtual space and thank him for everything that he has done. It does not matter what we are dealing with. It does not matter what we are facing. God still deserves the glory. God still deserves the honor. God is still God. He is faithful. Come on. He is true. He has been a good father. He has been a good father. Come on. He's been good. And it does not matter where I find myself. One thing I know about God is that he is going to continue to love me. He's going to continue to 
give me everything that I need to continue to move forward in him. And I just love God. I thank him because it does not matter what life presents itself to us. We have to be anchored. We have to just be still and know that at the end of the day, he is still God. It does not matter what's happening, even when it relates to our children, when it relates to our ministries, when it relates to our businesses, when it relates to um, things, you know, the workplace, no matter what's going on. It's not that your situation is not important, but we exalt God above it because we understand that um, God is to be, he's worthy to be praised. I mean, he didn't have to even wake us up this morning. So that's enough reasons to tell him thank you. He didn't have to clothe us in our right mind. I know that sometimes anxiety tries to creep in and, and uh, worry and doubt tries to creep in. But God is still faithful. And I just want to take the time to let him know, like, I still love you. Yeah, you have may have not answered all my prayers, but I still love you. You may have not given me everything I think that I should have, but I still love you. You may have not let that opportunity come yet, but I still love you. I may not understand every part of where you're taking me, but I still love you. Come on and love on God this morning and let him know that you are grateful. Hallelujah, Jesus, because... I don't know about you, but I'm not loving God off conditions. Come on, I refuse to live in my walk with God, loving him off of conditions, loving him off of just what he can do for me, right? This is a relationship. I'm not just intrigued and infatuated by your uh, hand and what you can give me. I'm not infatuated in following you for the two fish and five loaves of bread. Come on, long gone are the days where we can be infatuated with God just because of what he's done. Come on, yeah, I praise you and I'm grateful for you because of what you've done in my life, but I'm grateful and I praise you because of who you are. I tell God, I said, I love you because of both. Come on, because sometimes we get so deep and then we be acting like we're not grateful because of, you know, who God, what God has done. You know, he said, forget not my benefits. And so I'm grateful for the benefits that the Lord give us, the benefits of uh, Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed for me so that I can be free. I'm grateful for life and life more abundantly. That's a benefit to have life and to have it more abundantly. That's a benefit. I'm grateful that I am seen and not viewed. Come on, that's life. I'm grateful. That's a benefit. It's a privilege to be li to be alive. It's a privilege to be above. It's a privilege to not be beneath. It's a privilege to have the activity of my limbs. So, Lord, I thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. I know that there's a lot of stuff that's happening in our world and there's things going on with Israel and there's things going on in the United States and there's things going on in China and there's things going on in the third world countries. But I'm still yet grateful and I'm still yet thanking God because you did not have to allow me to be here. I could have been six feet under. Come on, I could have been beneath. Come on, but you allowed me another opportunity. And if that's and if that's what my mind can recall this morning, come on, I, that's good enough. If that's what I can think on this morning, come on, that's good enough. If he don't do nothing else for you, will you tell him thank you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready to go into um, uh, the rest of our decrees. But before we get started, I want to ask you to go ahead and like and share this. Go ahead and let somebody else know that we're uh, getting our transformation in the presence of the Lord this morning. We are allowing the Lord to transform us this morning. Come on. And we're thanking him and we're blessing him and we're showing our gratefulness for life itself this morning. And I want somebody else to have a chance to get transformation as well. So do me a favor and please let somebody else join in on this kingdom morning, on this morning where we can be refreshed through the Holy Spirit. Somebody you know may have been weighed down and they may need rest. They may need to hear about Jesus. They may need to hear about how he can cause their hearts, you know, to be free from anxiety and stress and weariness, right? And when you have a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, come on, that just shifts your whole perspective. You might not feel good. You might have woke up 
up and your bills may have been due. You know, the kids might have need, had a need. Come on, you got a need. Your body may have not been feeling 100. But here's the thing about gratitude and thanksgiving. It puts you in the right mindset. It puts you in the mindset of uh, just it lifts your spirit. And it helps you to understand that somebody is in a worse predicament than you. You, we look at our circumstances sometimes and somebody is far way off than us. They are far, they are, they are so in a whole totally different predicament. Somebody in some country can't even come on and do these lives like how we can. Come on, somebody don't even have the privilege to come on to do this how we're gathering in the morning on this live Come on, somebody don't even have a Wi-Fi. They wish they can connect with the world. Some people don't even have the connection that they wish they could have. So let's be grateful in all things. Give thanks unto God. Come on, he told us to cast our cares on him for he care for us. And so I understand that things happen, but God is still good. Can you declare that this morning? Things happen. Things happen. But God is still good. He's still faithful. He's still just. He didn't change because your circumstance got bad or because your circumstance didn't, you know, pay about the way you thought that thought that it would. He still is God. So this morning we thank him for being God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, God. That anxiety can't stand a chance in your presence. That anxiety can't stand a chance in this atmosphere come on many didn't make it but i was one who did i was one of the ones who did and this morning i'm grateful for life so as you are sharing go ahead and subscribe like this give this video a thumbs up so that this can send algorithm through youtube and more people can be reached with the kingdom of god and the message of good news come on and while you're at it make sure you hit that notification bell because if you don't hit the ringer you will not know when i go live and you will miss the morning sessions and um don't forget on wednesdays we do um the she uh, i mean not she evolves that's the institute be sure to sign up for the online institute but um what i was gonna say the podcast sis let's talk Starts at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time every Wednesday. And so we have that on Wednesdays. Then inside of the sisterhood, we pray in the mornings on Saturdays together as sisters in Christ. So if you're looking for to join a group of ladies who love God on fire, transforming, growing, becoming, and holding each other accountable while we do that, and you want to grow and join a sisterhood with women of faith, then click the link in my bio on my YouTube bio. And you will see, uh, it'll take you straight to the sisterhood. It's absolutely free to join us. Um, and I just know it's going to be a blessing to you. All right. So moving right along with our morning, moving right along again, I'm Josie, your development coach. I'm also a minister and daughter of God, and I provide online coaching services, um, and courses also that are designed to help women of faith, uh, get their transformation, unlock their greatness and tap into their full potential. Um, you guys are leaders. I'm called to leaders. I'm called to um, help train and equip women to rise up and step into their place, their rightful place, discover your purpose, and walk into your divine call. Come on, then, um, as the Lord released me later on, I'll be showing women of faith how to build a six-figure business, okay? How to build a successful online business so that you can begin to transform your finances and leave your nine-to-five, that nine-to-five you hate, that nine-to-five that's draining you, right? So that you can step and be able to still spend time with your kids, break poverty off your bloodline, um, and just do kingdom you'll be able to live your dreams and step into your calling freely without stressing or worrying about financial strain right and so as god continue to evolve me i will release that soon um when he told me to release that to you and so yeah so yeah we are evolving and again thank you for coming thank you for being on with me this morning and so um and so um we're going to go ahead and get into 
our commanding our day and making our declarations over our day. If you've been joining us in the other days, you will know that we we declare our morning. We tell and command our morning and declare our day. And we tell our day what to do. We put uh, our words into the atmosphere to shift our environment, right? And we know that our words have to obey us because life and death, it lies in the power of our tongue. And so whatever we speak, we give it the power to become um, something in the natural, right? Because your words are supernatural. When you speak, they create things. And so that's why we got to be careful what we speak. So we command this morning and we command that this, since this is the day that the Lord has made, we rejoice today. Uh, we command that in this day, there shall be light in every area of our lives. We command that this day, our children shall go forth in blessings. We command this day, we command this morning, that this morning shall produce the goodness of the Lord. That no matter what our circumstances look like, that we're still going to command that the peace and the joy of the Lord will over overtake us. We command this morning that there shall be no freak accidents. There shall be no road accidents. There shall be no hindrances. Come on, we we, we remove hindrances off and in our path. And we pray God clear our pathway. Begin to make way for us, God, in this day. Let this day, God, uh, respond to our thanksgiving and worship unto you. And may blessings be released as we give you thanks and give you reverence and give you honor, God. We command this day that it shall be fruitful. It shall be great. We command that this morning we shall receive a fresh download, fresh manna from heaven. We command this morning that we shall see the goodness of the Lord. We shall testify that, God, you got us over. You know, our souls will make a joyful noise in the Lord, and it does not matter what comes our way. Our souls shall be anchored in the Lord. We command this morning. We command this morning that no matter what comes our way, that our souls shall be anchored in the Lord, that no matter what falls at our left side, a thousand can fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come nigh our dwelling. For we command that only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. We command that every fiery dart that shall come our direction because the enemy will try to send fiery darts towards us in noonday and we declare that we quench every fiery dart with the armor we put on our breastplate of righteousness we put on our helmet of salvation we put on our sword we pick up our sword and we put on our belt of truth. We buckled up with the belt of truth. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we command this day that our armors are secure and that no fiery dart, no arrow shall come nigh us. We declare we quench every fiery dart with the helmet, with the, with the shield of faith. Come on, we're quenching every fiery dart. And we know that in all things, we pray without ceasing. We will pray for one another and we will pray for ourselves. And this morning, I want to command over you that your faith will not fail you. I want to command over you, over you, that your faith will not fail you, that no matter what you might be up against, that no Goliath can take you out, that no giant can overtake you. Come on, I don't care if it's the giant of anxiety, it will not overtake you. Come on, for we understand that God's word have already stated over us that you will pass through the water and they will not overtake you. Yeah, they may come up to here and it may seem like there's so much anxiety in your mind. Some days you may not know whether you're going or coming, but we declare and I command over you this morning that the waters that you may be in, it might be some deep waters. You may be facing some tough stuff, but I command over your morning. I command over your life. I command over my life that they will not surpass over my head because the word of God have already told me that I may, <coughs> excuse me, that I may pass through the muddy waters, but they will not overtake me. Come on. And when you're doing kingdom business, I want you to understand that the enemy is going to try to do everything in his power to take you out because he understand that his time is short. In the words of my husband, the enemy time is short. Come on. His time is short in the word of the Holy Bible. The time is short. And he's trying to stop the chosen ones, but he cannot stop what he did not ordain. 
Come on, we declare and decree. Sorry, y'all. We declare and decree over this day. Come on, we're moving into our declarations. I hope that you got your pen and paper. And I hope that you will read your declarations for the morning because it's one thing for me to say it. But it's a whole other thing when you speak with me, when you declare with me, when we declare our day. So if you don't mind uh, declaring with me this morning and speaking life into your life. Come on, if you don't mind, if you don't mind joining with me this morning as we declare our day, we're going to decree and declare things. The Bible says you shall decree a thing and it will be a established. Come on, it will happen. It's going to come to pass. And instead of us looking from a pessimistic state point, sometimes we got to shift our focus. That's why I'm so grateful for that's why I'm so grateful for gratitude. And that's why I'm so grateful that God gave us a tool, a weapon of thanksgiving, because we're going to go through circumstances in life. And it's sometimes going to seem like it's overwhelming us. But when we, because we know that God will never leave us or forsake us, I'm telling you, that's enough. That's enough. I don't need all of this external stuff to know God is with me. Come on. That's enough just to know the fact that he won't leave me. Come on. He won't forsake me for he himself has said it in Hebrews 13 and 5. And I'm telling you, this is enough. It should be enough. Come on. It's enough for me. Make that declaration this morning and say it's enough for me. It's enough for me, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is enough. Hebrew 13 and 5. I don't need these external factors to let me to make me feel good. I don't need these external factors. You don't need these external factors to let you know that God is there, that he's with you. Come on. Even when you can't feel him, baby, he working. Even when you can't sense God, he is working. Even when you don't understand what he is doing behind the scenes, baby, God is always working. He's always working. Come on. He ain't forgot. He ain't forgot. And I don't need no external factors to let me know that God loves me. I don't need no external factors to prove that he is God. I don't need no external factors to try to justify. Come on, any circumstances is going on in my life. I just know. I just know. Come on, for I know that he is God. And that's good enough. Come on, that's good enough. We're making God good enough in our lives. Come on, part of being a world changer is identifying that God is God and he's just good like that. Come on, he's good to me. He's good to me. I don't care what I'm going through. He's still good. He's still good. He's still good. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. He's still good this morning. He's still good tomorrow. Ha. Huh? He's still good ever, forever. And he'll always be. He'll always be. Come on, make that declaration out of your mouth. He will always be good. Because he is. He's good. No matter what your situation presents itself to be, the Lord is good. And sometimes you got to shut that devil down through thanksgiving and worship. Worship is a weapon. Worship is a weapon. Thanksgiving is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Hallelujah is a weapon. Hallelujah is a weapon. Against anxiety, hallelujah and thanksgiving and gratitude is a weapon. Against weariness and worrying. Come on, you ain't got to worry yourself into a frenzy. You ain't got to worry yourself into a ditch. You ain't got to worry yourself about how things are going to get done. The Lord is going to do it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So let's get ready for our declarations this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Le mansuka la mande kele doso yaba. Rata kala mansuka la pande kele le besi ki andoko. Le mansuka la pande ke soka. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ha kala basi kele le besi ki andoko la basi. Le kele mansuka la mante kele rabasu ya la basi. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes the devil will try to lie to you and make you think that God has left you or that God is not with you or somehow, some way he done forgot your name or somehow, some way he done forgot the promise he made to you or somehow, some way he 
you know, what he told you to do, all of a sudden it's a lie. And as a world changer, and as somebody that's called to change the world, you got to know that God is with you. Even in those tough seasons, even when the business is not booming, even when the job is jobbing, even when life is life, and even when your children seem to not be obeying you or going wayward or forgot what you taught them. Come on, even when it seemed like your spouse is not understanding you, God does. And when I tell you he ain't went nowhere, come on, the loyalest friend you will ever have is God. The most kindest, the most gentle, the most patient, the most understanding person you'll ever have in your life is God. It's God. I know we want people to show up for us and we're going to get to our decrees. But I know you want people to show up for you and you want people to help you and you want people to be there for you and you want people to show you they love you and care for you and they got your front and your back and they got your side. But let me tell you something. God is a friend that sticks closer than a brother, especially in time of trouble. Especially when it's hard. Especially when you don't know how you're going to make it out. Be encouraged. The Lord will take care of you. He will come through for you and your kids. He will come through for you. He will mend your broken marriage. He will mend your broken heart. He will restore you. Because he is God. And besides him. Come on, you got to come on. And besides him. There is no other. You got to fall in love with him. You may not always feel like doing a relationship thing with him because sometimes, you know, you be like, I ain't feeling it. And I'll be real. Sometimes you don't. But you still got to press because God has been so good to the point to where I got to press even when I'm not feeling it. Amen. So get ready. Let's get ready for our de declarations. If you ready, put a one in the comment section. If you are ready, put a one in the comment section. Hallelujah. First declaration. I declare, we declare and decree that abundance flows into our lives. Come on. Overflowing with opportunities and prosperity in every area of our lives in every endeavor of my life prosperity follows me come on i declare and i decree that divine favor surrounds me like a shield come on open doors of success and grantings of breakthroughs beyond my imagination come on he's doing it he's doing it god is doing it we declare and decree this morning that our health shall flourish radiating vitality and strength as our body, mind, and spirit align with wholeness and well-being. Come on. Anybody feel sick in their body? Receive this today. Receive this this morning. We declare supernatural wisdom shall guide us in our decisions, in our businesses, in our financial decisions, in our covenants, relationships, marriages, even in our relationship with the Lord. Wisdom supernatural wisdom shall guide our decisions we decree and declare that this supernatural wisdom is leading us to paths of righteousness and fulfillment in god in every aspect of our lives we decree and declare that every setback shall be turned into a setup for a greater comeback as resilience and determination pave our way to victory come on that's for all of us who are building something for the kingdom. Come on. That's for every one of you who's building something. You may be building a church. You may be building a business. You may be building your home. You might be building your children. Whatever it is, you might be building a team. Whatever it is, you might be building your faith. You might be building uh, whatever it is that you are working on. Every setback shall be turned into a setup for a greater comeback. As resiliency and determination pave our way to victory. Come on. We declare and decree this morning. Every relationship in our life shall be marked by love, harmony, and mutual respect. 
fostering bonds that will withstand the test of time. We declare kingdom covenants and relationships and friendships shall overflow us in Jesus' name. We declare, declare and decree this morning that our talents and gifts shall shine brightly, illuminating the world with creativity, innovation, and positive impact. Come on. We declare and decree divine protection shall encompass us, shielding us from harm and ensuring our safety in all our journeys today and for the rest of this month, week, year. Come on over not just us, but our children, over not just our children, but our loved ones, over our leadership, over our pastors, over our apostles, over our shepherds, over those who have charge over us. We declare and decree that the blood will be released over them and divine protection shall encompass us like a shield, keeping us from harm and ensuring our safety in all our journeys. We declare and decree that we have unwavering faith, igniting miracles and manifestations that defy logic and exceed our expectations. We declare and decree this morning that may the joy and laughter fill our days and the ones to come, bringing lightness to our heart and infusing every moment with gratitude and contentment. We declare and decree Doors of opportunity shall swing wide open before us, beckoning us towards new horizons of growth and success. We declare and decree divine breakthroughs in every area where we have faced stagnation or limitations as divine intervention propels us towards our dreams. It is so, and it cannot be reversed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. We declare and decree that it is so. In Jesus' name, as we made our declarations, Father, you said in your word that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Let every declaration that has come out of our mouth be established, Father. In Jesus' name, we declare and decree is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to just bless God right there. Thank you, Jesus. Le man sukala pande kelele besiki ando soya. Hakala mansukala pande kelele besi. Hallelujah, Jesus. O kola manse kele mandus kalapa. Le kasa tala mansukala pande kele besiki ando. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, this morning for your grace and your mercy. Let it prevail over our lives, God, this morning. Hallelujah. Forgive us of every shortcoming, everything we should have did, but we didn't do. Forgive us, Lord. Give us a fresh start and let your mercies refresh us today. Let the sure mercies of David cover us, God, today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to share a quote with you as we do every morning. As we do every morning. You ready? Y'all ready for this quote? If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. I'm going to say it again. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Amen. That's the quote for today. I want you to take that quote, run with that quote, apply that quote, and begin to take a stand in your life for something. Hallelujah. Get you some boundaries. Get you some standards. Come on and take a stand on what you believe. What do you believe? Stand on it, sis. Stand on it this morning. Whoever's watching, stand on it. Come on. Stand on it. What do you believe? And begin to stand on what you believe. If you were wavering, get a good grip and begin to take a stand again. Because you can because you can take a stand take a stand 
Take a stand. Take a stand. Come on, just stand. Amen. Amen. Before we get started in our topic for today, as we do every morning, come on. And I want you to begin to say this with me. So, do you know what it means to be a world changer? Do you know what it means to be chosen by God? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. And I want you to say this with me about yourself. Say, I am not average. I never fit in. I may be called weird growing up. You may have been called weird growing up. Being. You may, somebody may have made fun of you, called you weird growing up. These are signs that you are a world changer. You might have come from nothing. You might have came from nowhere, the bottom. No, no silver spoon in your mouth. No silver fork in your mouth. You are a world changer. You are marked by God. He has selected you and picked you. He chose you. He chose you. And there's no escaping the chosen position. You can't do what everybody else do. You're chosen. You a world changer. You don't fit in. You actually stand out like a sore thumb because people know it's something different about you, which is why they pick on you and make fun of you. You're a world changer. You are chosen and you have been told this since you were younger. When somebody first told me I was chosen and I was the generational curse breaker in my bloodline, I know what the world that man was talking about. I was in college going through demonic oppression. The enemy was kicking my tail. You hear me? And he came to me and told me, you are the generational curse breaker in your family. You are chosen by God. I didn't know what he was talking about. But I was younger when this happened. I was, uh, I think I was in my teens. I was a teenager. So you were chosen and you had been told this since you were younger. Last one. You go against the grain and may have been considered a rebel by other people because you don't do what the crowd do. You don't fit in. Right? You different. Maybe when you was growing up, you tried to fit in because of rejection or because people didn't like you. So you tried to do things to get approval of people. But after so long, as God heal you, bring you out of that place, break off the powers of people's opinions off you through you releasing that to him and you asking him help you. Father, I want to be free from people pleasing. Make my skin thick. Come on, then begin to release people. Forgive these people that you hold on to who you have a grudge against or whatever. And God is going to shoot you to the next place. Even in that where you won't feel like you have to please people because he's going to heal you from that rejection. He's going to re he, he gonna heal you from the wounds of rejection. Amen. So today's topic, y'all ready for today's topic? Come on. Are you ready for today's topic? If you ready, go ahead and put a one in the comment section. And we just about done. We just about done. I almost forgot to say this. The first world that you're going to Who's the first world that you're going to change? It's going to be your world. Amen? My world is the first world. Before I can change anybody else on the outside, it's got to start within me. Change starts within, and then it goes out. Every world changer knows this. Amen? Every... Every chosen one knows this. All right. So the topic for today, you got to have a vision. You got to have a vision for your life. Where are you headed? Where are you going? This transformation Monday is going to be geared towards you getting a plan for your life. If you feel stuck, if you feel like you don't know which path to take, which road to take, 
If you feel like you own the right road, but you still feel like you're hitting a brick wall, it might be time for you to pivot. God might be calling you higher. God might be shifting you somewhere different. This is why you feel uncomfortable. But without a vision for your life, if you do not have a vision, you will perish. God said, for without a vision, the people perish and cast and cast a uh, constraint or restraint. One of those. You must have a vision. You got to know where you are going. You got to know where you are headed. You got to get a plan for your life. A lot of times we wake up and we live and we wing it. But God don't want us to wake up and live and wing it. He don't want us doing that. He wants us to have a daily routine, a daily plan. So get you a daily routine, get you a daily plan, get you something that is going to take your life from where you are. Get you a healthy daily plan that's going to take you from where you are to where you need to be. So when you don't know what to do, who do you run to first? Do you run a Facebook first? Do you run an Instagram first? Do you run a Twitter first? Do you run a your bay first? Do you run to drugs, liquor, alcohol first? When you don't know what to do. A lot of times we stay in circumstances on these dead end jobs, working our fingers to the bone, sweating, bleeding, cussing, some of you, you know, fussing. Why? Because it's something that you currently, where you currently are, it is not fulfilling you. What you are currently doing, it is not your full potential. And because it's not your full potential, you feel the weight of staying stuck. You feel the weight of not rising. You feel the weight of not pivoting. You feel the weight of not moving when God is telling you to move. You feel the weight of what it costs. You feel the, you feel the penalty of what it costs to stay stuck, to not move, to not trust God. You feel the penalty. So when you're on these dead end jobs and you and now everybody ain't meant to leave their job. So this ain't for everybody. If God tell you don't leave your job, then you don't leave your job. If God put you there and that's where he wants you, then you be and you do what God have called you to do. But for those of you who you know, I'm depressed. Every time I go on this job, this job stress me out. I'm doing everything that is required of me, even staying late, even getting up, being to work on time. I'm putting in the hour. I'm doing what my manager tell me to do. I'm doing above and beyond. I'm showing up. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lacking integrity. Come on, because sometimes God will keep you just a little long on that job till you learn how to stay with something, until you learn how to be integral, until you learn how to um, follow instructions, until you learn how to work somebody else's vision and put in time so when you do have your own, that you've been unpaid your dues. So when it's your turn, your dues would have put a down payment for when it's your turn to have a business. You know what I'm saying? And so God trains us when we are working nine to fives how to have our own. So it's not good to skip processes. Boom, I'm talking to those who you've been going through the process. You know how to show up for somebody else's stuff. You've been on this job and you hate it. And I want to ask you, What's the vision for your life? Or maybe you don't have a job and you like, God, what's my next step? 
Have you considered God? Have you considered the plan, the Jeremiah 29 and 11 plan that he had for you? Because he said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of success and not failure to give you a hope and a future. Do you know the plan? Have you checked in with God and sat down with your notebook, get you a pen and go in the presence of the Lord and say, Father, I'm not going to move until you reveal to me what your Jeremiah 29 and 11 is for my life. What is the thing that you have in store for me? When I was trying to navigate and transition from working from, for man to working full-time in my purpose, I was still trying to work a job so I would get hired and wonder why it wouldn't work. I would go to get a job only for them to be like, oh, well, we couldn't even find a, a position on this to train. You couldn't even find a slot to train you. Then you go to another job and it's something else. And then you have to pull back and ask God, what is going on? And so sometimes we're out of alignment. Sometimes we're not in position. So we feel discomfort in our spirit because we are not what we supposed to be. Amen. We are not doing the thing that God has told us to do. Come on. We're not in that place where God has called us to be. So you feel the level of anxiety and stress because God is trying to get you to pivot. You feel uncomfortable because God is trying to get you to pivot. You feel stressed out on this job because God is trying to get you to pivot. You overwhelmed with the nine to five. You know that there is more to you. You know that God have another level for you. You know that God has chose you for greater. Come on, after all, you are a world changer. And as we close off this morning, I want you to leave with this. God has a plan for your life. It's time for you to take your life serious and get it off autopilot. Begin to ask God, be proactive by asking God, what is my Jeremiah 29 and 11? And, and if you thought you were in the right place and you still feel like you're hitting a brick wall, it's time for you to pivot. It's something that God is requiring you to do a step that you need to take that you have not yet to take. Whether he told you already or whether you need to sit in his presence to get that release, to get that answer, that should be where you are right now. For those of you who feel like, well, God took me, he led me to where I am now. Okay, but you still feel like you hit a brick wall. So it's time for you to go back to God and say, Lord, what are you doing in my life right now? What do I need to do? What steps I need to take? Is this some instructions you already gave me that I'm not using that I need to go ahead and do so that I can pivot and shift so life as I knew it would not be as stressful and will, and that load can be removed off of your shoulders because you were literally doing what God have assigned for you to do. And when you are fully obedient, you're going to see that weight lift off of your shoulders. You're going to see that burden lift off of your shoulders. You're going to see that issue lift off your shoulders. Amen. I love you. I want you to sit down with God, get a vision, get a plan. Come on, get, get a goals set up, get a calendar on your calendar and begin to set up daily and weekly goals. Once you figure out the plan, if you don't know it, get a weekly, get weekly goals Set a time frame up on your calendar to accomplish and hit these goals. Every day you wake up, you should be busy. Every day you wake up, you should be working. Every day you got 24 hours in a day and God has called you to be a good steward over those 24 hours. So how are you stewarding your time? 
what are you going to do to ensure that by this time next year, you will be in a different location? What are you going to do to ensure that by this time next year, sorry, y'all, that by this time next year, the whole trajectory of your life will look different because you started today taking baby steps towards your future. If you want to get out of where you at, you got to do something that you've never done. If you want to get unstuck with this current season you are in, you got to choose a different thing to do, sis. You got to choose something new. Matter of fact, you got to become somebody new. And in that becoming, we talked about that yesterday. You are literally going to have to embrace the new you. And you'll know when it's time to embrace something new when it presents itself to you to embrace. New is going to present itself to you every day you wake up. And you have a choice to hit snooze or you have a choice to choose that new version of you. And every day when you decide to delay that gratification so you can choose that new version of you and you begin to say yes, Every day you wake up, no matter how life may seem, you say yes. We talked about discipline, how you need discipline to choose this new version. Because it's going to be days you're going to want to revert back to the old version of you. And in order for you to stay in the newest version, first of all, it got to hurt bad enough. Second of all, you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to live life intentionally every day I wake up. It's not a choice for me. I don't get to be mediocre. I don't get to live beneath. I don't get to live like I'm not a daughter's king. I mean, a, a king's daughter. I don't get to live like that. And some of us are struggling with our identity, so we don't even know how to step into this. So I challenge you even in that. Who are you in the Lord? Do you understand that you are a daughter of a king? Do you know your rights as a child of God, as a daughter of God? Do you understand what you carry? So that's your homework. Your homework is get in the presence of God. I want you to get, take small incremental, incremental steps. Every day you wake up, write out your goal. And as you continue to do this as a habit every day, you're going to begin to, it's going to begin to come second nature to you, like the back of your hand. And then you'll be easily able to just do different things without always having to write it down, always having to write it down. That comes later in life. Once you have mastered first the art of doing. So that's what I want you to do. Get in the presence of the Lord. Lord, what's my Jeremiah 29 and 11? Reveal it to me. Drop it in my thoughts. Then I want you to get your notebook and take notes. What did he show you? What did he tell you? Spend time with him. If you feel cluttered and stopped up like you still didn't get an answer, I want you to keep going to the Lord and ask him to break every layer that is preventing you from walking into your destiny. I want you to begin to ask God to show you what's hindering you. And I want you to begin to pray and ask the Lord to help you to overcome these areas. What is hindering me? What is stopping me? Is it a generational curse? Come on, is it is it trauma? What's stopping you? It's either one or the other, or it's you. So I want you to take that time, to spend time with God, write out your vision, whatever he show you. And every day, write your goals down. What is it that you want to attain in life? Who is it that you see yourself being? Who is it that you see yourself becoming? Where will she hang out? Where will she go? Who will she spend her time with? What places in the earth will she visit? Will she travel? Will she go to seminars? Will she take classes and courses? Will she invest in her future? Will she become somebody different? Who will she become? You got to start doing the work. Take time out of your day. To hit those daily goals, put a clock on your phone and begin to work on it. When that clock run out, work on the next thing. When the clock run out, 
Set a time on your phone and hit these goals. Amen. You have no excuses. I gave you the tools you need to begin to work your vision and begin to find out what the vision is if you have no clue. Amen. It's your season to rise. It's your time to do greater. Come on, you have no excuses. People that want different, they don't make excuses. They just do it. You are a doer. Always remember that. You are a leader. Always remember that. You are chosen. Always remember that. You are called to do greater works. Always remember that. To whom much is given, much is required. Always remember that. God ain't punishing you. This is alignment for your assignment. This is the next for your next level. This is the steps that you need to take to get to the next place. Get your transformation, sis, and go higher. Ask the Lord for what you need, and he going to give you instructions. Because you have access to him, too. So I want you to do these things. Don't forget to execute. Faith without works is dead. Execute and do what your father has called you to do. Listen, I love you, sis. I'm rooting for you. I know that there's so much in store that God has for you. It's your season and time of elevation. Get your vision squared away. Do the necessary work each and every day. Make you a daily goal. Make you a no, make you a, a goal. Make your goal, whatever goal you're trying to reach, and write down the daily steps of what it's going to take to accomplish those goals. Get you a timer on your phone. Set that timer up on your phone. Get your just cut off every distraction. I don't care what it is. You're going to have to do it, even if you got kids. It's time. Team, no excuses. Let's get it. I love you, and I'll see you at the top. God bless.